Okay, class, we're back again. So where we ended was that luteinizing hormone stimulates the receptors on the outer granulosa cells of the graphene follicle. Let's look at that graphene follicle again. On the outer granulosa cells to stop the production of sickly GMP, which then allows the oocyte to go from prophase one all the way through meiosis again, further into meiosis, to then go to metaphase two. Now, when it gets to metaphase two and visit meiosis one, then you have a one polar body and the, oh, the egg right here. Okay, and then it'll stay in meiosis 2, metaphase 2, meiosis 2, unless there's fertilization. And then it'll take it all the way there. All right, so we'll go a little further. We'll go a little further. So here is the zona pellucida surrounding that egg. Here's that first polar body right there, still within the surrounding of the zona pellucida, and here's the secondary over oocyte right there, which would be this right here, and it'll go all the way to metaphase two. Okay, so then we go further. Here, of course, is that. Here's the same drawing that you see there. Okay, as the graphene follicles grow due to FSH, the theca interna cells, let's go to a picture so you can see, the theca interna cells, these are surrounding cells, so these are granulosa, again, these are granulosa cells here, here's the theca cells outside of there, so the theca interna cells, due to LH secretion from the anterior pituitary will cause these this testosterone produced by the thick interna to slip into to diffuse into these granulosa cells and there is the enzyme aromatase that can convert testosterone the male hormone to 17 beta estradiol the female hormone FSH increases the aromatase. So here's how the thing will go again. LH causes the male hormone to be produced, which will leak into these. FSH increases the amount of aromatase secretion within here to make more estrogen. So the, so the FSH is making more estrogen through the aromatase activity. Okay. By the 10th to 14th day after the first day of the administration, the bleed, one follicle becomes mature, and the other follicles begin to just regress off. So one follicle becomes more mature, and the others regress off. Okay, what causes the others to regress? Different secretions of hormones and paracrines, but particularly the FAS ligand. The FAS lichen, a ligand is, is a generic term for anything that can bond to a receptor, but the FSH turns on apoptotic signals, apoptosis, 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 in the in a cell to make it destroy cells. So apoptosis. Pop, uh, called apoptosis, to be honest, causes these others to degenerate. So really only one comes forward. Now, why is that the FSA, FAS like and so many Fs, the FS, FAS ligands, the receptors would start to decrease so that it would protect one. The surviving graphene follicle becomes so big that it bulges out of the ovary. And here it is right there, bulging. 
hormones stimulated to burst and release the secondary oocyte, which is this right here. Now, what's being released at ovulation would be the secondary oocyte in metaphase 2, the zona pellucida, and the corona radiata, which are granulosa cells. And then that would then enter into the fallopian tube to travel. And if fertilization occurs, then you'll go further and, and finish meiosis. If it doesn't, then that ovulate oocyte will just die out eventually. Okay. So here again, it's a follicle growing, mature graphian follicle. Here's a picture of ovulation that's occurring. When the it is released, the secondary oocyte is released, ovulation, then the space left behind in the ovary where this was will form a tissue called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum, that's the space left after this. And this secretes both estradiol and progesterone, this corpus luteum. And these play roles in the menstrual cycle. So we've been discussing the ovarian cycle, what happens in the ovary, the ovarian cycle, what happens in the ovary. Okay. And that's this picture here. Okay, we'll go a little further. Now we're looking at the pituitary ovarian axis, the pituitary ovarian axis at this point. Okay, in the pituitary ovarian axis, the anterior pituitary secretes FSH and LH. The hypothalamus secretes something called gonadotrophin releasing hormone. There is a there's a negative feedback anterior pituitary FSH LH, and this here. This secretion of all of this can cause a feedback to decrease the gonadotrophin releasing hormone and the FSH, LH. Aside from stimulating the development of follicles, FSH stimulates estradiol production. Remember, that's what we discussed already because it increases aromatase to convert male hormone to female. The larger the follicle, the more estradiol is released. FSH and LH are not equal and affect the pulsatile frequency. So, in other words, secretion from the hypothalamus is a pulsatile secretion. Okay, now we're looking at the menstrual cycle. Okay, we're looking now at the menstrual cycle. In order to look at the menstrual cycle, we need to look at the endometrial lining of the uterus. Here's the muscle layer, myometrium. Here's the endometrium. Here's the stratum basalis, and here's the stratum functionalis. Okay. All right. So the menstrual cycle is a monthly event. The normal menstrual cycle goes from 24 to 20 to 38 days, but generally most describe it as 28 days median value. The three phases of this are the, is the menstrual phase, which is the bleed. That's when the stratum functionalis here denudes away because the lady did not get pregnant. Then we have the proliferative period. The proliferative period it went, is when it grows. And then the secretory period is when these cells here become engorged with glycogen. So the key to this is, just to make it simple, if the lady does not get pregnant, this will shed out. There's no stimulation to this. The first half of the cycle that we'll talk about is proliferative. That means to take it, which would be way down here after bleed, and make it thicker. This will act as a bed for the fertilized egg to embed in. Okay, getting ready for ovulation and to come down. Then the secretory is when these cells start accumulating glycogen in order to nourish that fertilized egg, i.e. called the zygote. And the reason is the afterbirth has not been developed, so that's the only way 
that you can get nourishment until the afterbirth is developed. Okay. So in the ovaries, so this here is in the, the female uterus. The ovaries which control the whole thing has the follicular phase. That's mainly an FSH deal. And the follicular phase is the one that causes this to get thick. FSH. Then ovulation occurs. Egg is the uh, the uh, egg is gone in metaphase two, and then the luteal phase here, which is mainly an LH type of deal, will cause glycogen to accumulate to give the uh, the fertilized egg n nourishment if if it does become the zygote. Okay. So the ovarian follicular phase, the FSH phase, lasts for about 1 to 13 days. About 1 to 13 days. So that follicular phase lasts about 1 to 13 days. During that time, the primary follicle, secondary follicles, graphene follicle, one is kept, all the others regress. Okay. Is characterized by an increasing level of estradiol from the granulosa cells. Remember, they are producing it because of the conversion of testosterone to estradiol. This causes the endometrium, which is thinned down, to become thicker, proliferate, to get ready. Then what will happen is... The ovarian, follicle, the, the ovarian follicle, initiated by follicle stimulating hormone FSH, it upregulates the number of FSH receptors. That means, as we studied endocrine, that the number of receptors start coming to the cervix, start coming, upregulate that amount of receptors, follicle stimulating hormone on the surface of the granulosa cells, and the sensitivity of FSH increases. FSH stimulates the granulosa cells to produce aromatase that converts, as we alluded to, the formation of estradiol. This estradiol, in turn, causes this thickening here, this estrogen effect. The FSH causes these to this to thicken. Okay. At the end of this phase, which is the end of the follicular phase, FSH and, and high levels of estradiol, because it caused that, stimulate the production of LH receptors. So FSH upregulates LH receptors. FSH upregulates LH receptors. And the increased estradiol also stimulates the hypothalamus to re release more gonadotrophin releasing factor hormone, which the L, that means it increases LH from the anterior. So it's really a positive feedback aspect. Because of this positive feedback, you get this called the LH surge. And it's that LH surge. Let me say it again. It's this LH surge due to all this positive feedback that causes, here's LH, this surge causes the ovulation to occur. This LH surge causes the ovulation to occur. Okay. So here's the synopsis of the follicular phase. FSH, the main hormone that causes the follicles to grow to the graphene follicle, causes aromatase from the granulosa to make the Estrogen, estradiol along with FSH increases FSH receptors, increasing that. But this FSH and estradiol also cause LH receptors on the graphene follicle to occur. This rapidly rising estradiol causes this pulsatile increase of this. And all of that ultimately, as you can read here, leads to that LH surge. And that LH surge is what causes ovulation. So we're going to end right here.